Michael, it's lovely to see you here at London Film and Comic Con Winter. How have you been enjoying it this weekend? Um, having a wonderful time. Uh, we came in Friday, late. I have no idea what time it is. I'm not quite sure what day it is. Uh, I don't even know if jet lag applies at this point. But I got to tell you, as I guess we're coming to the end of Sunday here, it went by a lot faster than I thought it would, which is always a good sign because it meant we had a really good time. And you guys have been super popular as well. I mean, what have the fans been asking you most about? I, you know, um, how in the hell I ever worked with her, I think is one of the most <laughs> prominent questions. And now I have a wet one on me. That's horrible. Oh, that's a good idea. Hold on. Get it. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. I mean, Out of shot. There we go. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, wait. Not yeah. oh. I'm going to need an extra one. There. Oh, wait. There we go. Here, take my one. dirty wet one. Ah. Um, they want to know about that. They want to know where we sanitize ourselves. Uh, you can tell it's clearly Sunday. Um, what was the question? <laughs> yes, they ask, yes, they ask about, I think the most common thing is what was your reaction to finding out that Sam Anders was one of the final five. I think in the lore of BSG, that's people's, you know, greatest uh, curiosity is how did we all find out this incredible gear shift in our characters and how did we receive it and how did we accept it and how did we deal with it and, um... You know, I never get tired of answering that question because it's still, I still don't know what the real answer is. It confused the hell out of me then, it still confuses the hell out of me now. So. The people who haven't been fortunate enough to talk to you here today, what is the answer to that question? <laughs> um, I tell them what I tell everybody. I just, I, I took the news um, in utter confusion and I incorporated that confusion into Sam because I, as Michael the actor, I didn't understand how I could reconcile all those things that I had played and portrayed as the character of Sam Anders up until that point as this advocate for the resistance and this newfound freedom fighter and this guy that was fighting Cylons and suddenly that's my, that's my kin. Those are my people and I've been shooting them. So I, I, was, I was thrown, I was confused. I had conversations with Ron Moore and David Icke, our producers, and, and I didn't, didn't know how to... to um, to make sense of it all and finally uh, I figured that was the best way to put this into perspective is to take that confusion that I was feeling put it into the character and that's how I played out the rest of the season. Uh, obviously you've got Katie Sackhoff there to your left tell us a little bit about working with that, that lady. Yeah good god impossible just utter nightmare you have no idea she's ugly she smells funny she's not friendly at all we have no chemistry I don't know how I did it they don't pay me enough yeah, it's terrible. Very Horrible. Nice. <laughs> what was the favorite episode you worked on, and what were some of your favorite lines that your character had in the show? Um, my favorite, uh, you know, I, I, I write, there's a line that I put on, on autographs from time to time that people say, put down your favorite line, or they always say, you know, give me a sound bite or something that you remember from the show. And the very last thing that Anders uttered was, see you on the other side. And that always strikes a really uh, emotional chord because it, it's such a loaded statement. It had carried so much weight both for the character and for that was also the last thing I shot. It was the last scene that Katie and I shot. And that has a lot of emotional weight. Um, and I really loved, in that same episode I believe, was the flashback, was the speech about perfection. Anders has a, a speech where he's being interviewed as the athlete in his quest for perfection. And that really summed up the character beautifully. And I love the way that speech was written. And it's just way too long to write on an 8 by 10 So I was like, I'm going to go see you on the other side. It's easier. I mean, what do you think it is about um, BSG? Because it's, it's, it's almost as popular now as it was when it was, you know, gracing the screens, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, um, it holds up, you know? And, and that's a sign of good, good writing, of good storytelling. Uh, because it's timeless and I, I, I wish I could take credit for this but Jamie Bamber who played Apollo said this one time when we were doing a panel at a convention that it's a period piece and he's right it was a sci-fi show that was set in space but a period piece is, is just it's, a, it's, a, it's an allegory that's set in the time and this one just happened to be set in the future you think a period piece is powdered wigs and horseback and, and you know Sir Lancelot and that type of thing but this was really a period piece it was a drama first and foremost it was set in space it had a sci-fi theme but it was really a timeless social and political allegory, and I think that's why it holds up. There were real themes. These are human themes. They're themes of war and religion, 
and, and imperialism and society and structure, that type of thing that still holds up today. And I think that's why the show has such staying power. If they came to you, you guys today, and said, how about a BSG reunion, come back for a set number of episodes, what would you say? What's my call time? <laughs> I'll be there at 6 a.m. with bells on. Um, I, I, I feel pretty safe in, in saying I could speak for most of the cast that I think we would do it in a heartbeat. I think, unfortunately, that ship has sailed. And I know that there's some discord between the um, create the original creator, uh, Glenn Larson, and and Ron's vision, and they had they differed in their visions of the show. And there was talk of a movie, you know, a feature film, which I felt if they had taken that ball and run with it at the end of our series, we had the sets built, we had the costumes, we had the cast intact, we could have made a feature film that I think would have been wildly successful. I really do. I think even now you could assemble this cast and still make a successful film. But unfortunately, we don't retain the feature film rights. And the creator is entitled. It's his show. It's, in, you know, it's his vision. And I think they're going to make a film called Battlestar Galactica. I don't think it's going to look anything like our show. I don't think it's going to have anything to do with us. And that saddens me, you know, because I feel like our efforts are largely responsible for bringing back that title to popularity. Um, and it's too bad that we weren't able to pay off our fans with a, a, a feature film. And I wish we could have. It doesn't look like that would happen. I don't think there's any reunion uh, in the future because I think Ron has moved on. You know, I mean, he, he, he did what he wanted very successfully. He's gone on to make uh, um, other shows and he's right now in the midst of a series called Outlander, which is fantastic. I just plugged Outlander for Ron Moore because I love that show. Um, it would be a, uh, it would be a fantasy if if one day the phone rang and said, "Hey, guess what? We're getting the team back together." Um, even if it was just for like a, a little two-hour, you know, Christmas special like the Brady Bunch used to do. <laughs> I'd do that in a heartbeat. You know, dress up like an elf. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I just left that image now. I've got that in my head. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, that would be a nice like Christmas special, a BSG Christmas. Um, Michael, finally, what can we look forward to next from you? Um, well, fortunately, uh, a friend of mine who I worked with years ago as a director, writer, uh, producer, director, and he asked me to come on board and help co-produce a small independent feature film called The Last Transport. And I had the distinct pleasure of being able to forward the script to Katie because uh, Chris Angel, uh, the director, writer, wrote a character that he always had Katie in mind for. And I was lucky enough to get her to read it, and she likes it. And if all goes well, we're in pre-production right now. <laughs> Um, Katie and I are going to do this independent film. I'm going to help co-produce it. And it's a, it's a great little intimate four-hander. Um, very simple, you know, only four or five main players. And um, I'm really excited about that because that's my first foray into production. You know, I've done some directing and I, I'm definitely going to, to act in it as well. But it's fun to be able to try to get a little independent feature made. And then there's a show, I just finished uh, doing an episode of it. There's a series in the States called Scandal. It's wildly popular, and uh, I was lucky enough to come on and, and do an episode of that, which is yet to come out, so it's all top secret. Can't say a word as to what I'm doing on it, but I was there, <laughs> and uh, was very lucky to have been a part of it, and uh, I'm happy to have done that. That was a great gig, great cast. What a fun show to work on. We very much look forward to seeing that top secret episode of Scandal coming up, and of course, lots of luck with the feature film as well, and we look forward to seeing that in the future too. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this. <laughs>